This is another small project where I combined a geometry node with grease pencil. The main focus is on simulating line art highlight effects. This geometry node allows me to adjust the size of the highlights, simulating the characteristics of concave and convex surface highlights. To make the lines a bit more vivid, I also added a noise texture to create a discontinuous effect in the lines. Next, I will show you my entire process. Let's get started. This time, I'm using Blender 3.6.2. Here's my model, with each part separated out. First, I added materials to the model, starting with a basic tune shader. Before that, I turned off any environmental lighting effects. Next, in the EV renderer, I changed the filmic to standard under color management settings. This ensures that the rendered colors match the color set in the material editor. I selected the largest model and added a material. Replacing the shader with a diffuse BSDF shader. Converted to RGB. Added a color ramp. and changed it to constant. Adjusting the sliders. Since I'm using a point light, the light's position affects the color boundaries. By moving the light closer, the effect became more pronounced. Set the color of the light and dark sides. Next, I copied this material to the other models, setting the colors for all the models. Some models have multiple materials, which doesn't affect the following steps. You can freely add materials according to your artwork. Now, let's move on to creating the geometry node. I hid the model and will use a simple shape to demonstrate the principle of highlights. I created a circle. Note that my model's proportions are realistic. You don't have to pay more attention to the values in the node, just ensure the effect is correct. Enter edit mode and extrude into a round surface and subdivide it. Then, created a sphere and scaled it down to think of it as a point light. Switching to top view helps for clarity. Added vertex color to this round surface for visualization purposes. Then, added a material, removed the shader, and connected the previously created vertex color to the surface. Enabling Material Preview Mode, if the round surface turns black, it means the previous steps were successful. Now, let's move to the Geometry node. I created a Geometry node, pinned this panel, and dragged the sphere into it. Added a Geometry Proximity node. and connected the distance to the small circle. In the modifiers panel, under output attributes, select the color created earlier. At this point, the node visualization is complete. Now, move the sphere and activate relative. Add a vector add node to expand the range of distance. Move the sphere around. What we need is that this black part is exactly the distance between the sphere and the round surface. Next, add the round surface itself. Add a vector distance node. Connect each location to the distance node. Then add this distance to this range. Adjust this value to place the boundary line roughly at the center of the round surface. I moved the light and found that it did not achieve the desired effect. Moving the light closer and adjusting it. I found that the closer the sphere is to the round surface, the darker the color becomes. The further away, the smaller the black color. 
This is because the distance is inverted. To fix this, add a vector multiply node here and set the value to minus 1. This has the right result. No matter how far away the sphere is, it can correctly affect the round surface. By now, you should understand the principle behind this highlight effect. Add a delete geometry node. Connect the final result to the selection, and no longer need the visualization. Add a color ramp. And the final result is ready. I deleted the faces inside the round surface. Add another vector multiply to reverse the deleted area. OK, this node is completed. Set this value to zero because I have accurately get the distance between them. Save this node. Delete this round surface. It will no longer be needed later. Show the model again. Now, let's add a highlight to this cylinder. Select it, enter edit mode, and duplicate and separate this edge. Note that the more you subdivide the edge, the smoother the highlight movement will be. Add the previously created geometry node to this circle. Sorry, at this point, the point light is not working yet. Select the circle. Adjust the value, and the effect will appear. To make it easier to control, I will place this value in an external control. Create a combine XYZ node. And connect C to group input. Naming it offset. Create a separate render view. At this point, the simulated highlight doesn't follow the light's movement. Set the sphere as a child object of the point light and move it to the point light center. Turn off rendering for this sphere. This way, the highlight will follow the light's movement. I couldn't find a method in the geometry node to get the light's position, so this can only be used instead. Next following are some repetitive actions. Copy and separate the edges that need highlights. I will categorize them into bold, mid, and thin collections, preparing to add grease pencil. Move these edges up a bit so the grease pencil isn't obscured. Note that the highlights clipping depends on the origin of geometry, so make sure to set the origin of the highlights to the geometry. This is a concave shape, and its highlight is away from the light source. Adjust the inverted value externally and name it invert. Here, changing minus 1 to 1 inverts the highlight. Next, copy the geometry node to other models with the same effect. Check the overall result. Edges that are not subdivided enough need further subdivision. Once everything looks good, start adding grease pencil. First, Add grease pencil to the main model. 
Select the corresponding collection. Adjust line thickness. I don't want these extra lines because they will overlap with the highlight. After setting the contour to individual silhouette, these extra lines will disappear. Then create the grease pencil for the highlight. Select the corresponding collection. Adjust the line thickness. Hide the grease pencil for the main model and see if the highlights grease pencil is suitable. There are many extra lines. Turn off intersections. Only edges can generate grease pencil. Note that loose is essential. Change the color of bold. Move the light to see the effect. Copy the bold grease pencil for the remaining highlights. The thickness of the grease pencil lines doesn't quite match my expectations. I changed all the grease pencil to world space. You can hold down alt so that the selected grease pencil will be changed together. Adjust the thinner lines here. Next, adjust the position of the highlights to make them appear within the black outline. Hold Ctrl to move them on the grid to ensure accuracy. You can adjust the color by changing the blend to make the highlight color overlay the model's color beneath, making the highlight color more reasonable. Next, create a discontinuous effect for the highlight lines. Add a noise texture and add it to the final result. Adjust the color slider. and find a suitable scale. Then, adjust the distortion. The discontinuous effect will appear. Because the models vary in size, placing the distortion externally allows for individual controls to each model. Okay, that's the main content of the video. What follows is the adjustment of details. Here are some shortcomings. The rendering order of grease pencil is not easy to control. When the model's perspective angle is large, grease pencil with different colors may render in a confusing order. If there's a better solution in the future, I will update a video to explain it. This file will also be placed on Buy Me A Coffee for free. Have a good day, and see you next time.